in this six part video, I talk about how we can use our daily life experiences to meet the two biggest challenges of our time, exponential change and increasing diversity. Change is happening faster and faster, making our old modes of thinking obsolete. So we need to learn to relate to each moment as the surfer relates to the ocean waves, being in constant relationship with the ever-changing now. These six segments are excerpted from a speech I gave in 2008 at the International Conference for Business and Consciousness. The title of the speech was Surfing Chaos, Six New Human Capacities for Navigating Change. So I hope you'll listen to all six of these programs, but if only one or two interest you, they are edited so that each segment stands alone. Thanks for watching. More skills that I want to get to. You ready to shift? One is called, one more is called, participating with the change process. Now the things that I've talked to you already about are experiencing what is, relating more and controlling less, and communicating honestly as an example of relating versus controlling. Okay, that's what I've talked to you about so far. The next skill is called participating with change, and what I mean by that is when you begin to experience yourself as an ever-changing, constantly receiving data, sending without, without so much filtration from the controlling, judging, comparing mind, when you begin to be more of a surfer, you are more in the flow of life. You are more participating with change rather than being buffeted about by the forces. And you are then becoming more sensitive to early warning signals. So I want to give you an exercise. Like we said in the opening remarks, there are a lot of us who have been blindsided or surprised by changes when really if we tuned in a little more carefully, we would have sensed something's not quite right here. But it's our pain phobia, that cultural disease called pain phobia, that keeps us in denial and not wanting to feel the experience something's not right. So I want you to tune into your own life right now and assess is there some area, it could be some subtle thing, in fact, I'd rather it be something small rather than some major life change. Something where something's not right. It can be in a relationship, it can be in relationship to your body, in relationship to your work. Some, something could stand some shifting. And you don't even have to know in this moment exactly what it is. So just tune in. See if you have that capacity to feel something's not quite right. Because I'm saying that's a good thing to be able to feel that. What I'd like you to do with that is, here's my present situation. It includes the something's not right, and it includes, like, let me, let me make an example of myself. I'm starting to get some arthritis, okay? My joints are starting to get stiff. Okay, something's not right. I'm getting some feedback. Some of you would say, well, that's just old age. I'm not willing to say that. I do some research, I find out that sugar is one thing that causes inflammation, so you know, I'm tuned in enough to my body to know how I feel when I eat sugar and how I feel when I don't eat sugar and, and what goes on with my joints. Okay, so there's, there's my example, something's not right. So here's where I am with regard to that. I still do a lot of fruit, I still do chai that has sugar in it. And here's where I'd like to be, because this is what I want you to do. Here's where I am, here's where I'd like to be if I were operating at, a, my, at pretty close to my maximum potential. So I want you to just, in a very brief way, here's where I am, here's where I'd like to be. I'm calling that the gap right now. So see if you can come up with something that fits that, where you create a gap. I'm not making myself wrong for eating sugar. It's not about that. It's about experiencing in, a, in an open way. So what I want to do now is promote the idea 
that this gap, if you hold this gap and, and can feel both ends of it, it's an uncomfortable situation. It's uncomfortable for me to feel here's where I am and here's where I'd like to be. And if I were to close that gap up to here, I'd probably be healthier and pain free. Okay, it's, it's, there's some discomfort. Now in our culture, we're taught that this kind of discomfort, and this is some, something that a lot of us would call anxiety, because I'm not doing something on behalf of myself. This, 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 it's, it's tension. Our culture teaches us if we feel pain or anxiety to take a pill and get rid of it. Now a lot of us are more sophisticated than that, and we understand that there's a certain amount of discomfort that's good for us. Well, this is the kind of discomfort that's good for us, to be able to experience these kind of gaps. I have worked with just hundreds and hundreds of people in groups and one-on-one and -on -one in coaching using this gap work, and it seems to be one of the most effective ways of promoting personal change. Simply experiencing the gap. Not making a bunch of New Year's resolutions, the creative visualization of, of what you want, that's great, but that's only one half of it. If you don't have the other half of here's where I am, and you, you know, sort of in AA they talk about a fearless and searching moral inventory. We need to be fearless and searching and honest with ourselves about where we are now, and have a clear vision of the other end of it. But the tension is very creative in that. And it, it will stretch you and it will make changes in you just by holding these two poles. I don't, I, you know, you won't, you won't have time today to have that experience, but if you're willing to just take whatever gap you identified and work with it and be with it, it will make you, it actually, what people have said, and I, I've experienced it myself, it makes you into a bigger person somehow. There's some way in which it's not a struggle between sugar and no sugar. It's, it, it, it ceases to be that. It's a, it's it's a self-expansion that happens with this work. And so that's a change technology that when we begin to understand change and kind of get it into our bones and are kind of constantly working with ourselves in this way, because there's always some, some leading edge, there's always something. If we just work with ourselves, not beating ourselves up about it, but just working with ourselves in this gap way, it's again like surfing. You know, there's, this, you know, there's, there's some adjustments that always need to be made when you're surfing life. Because then when you're voluntarily making changes on a day-to-day, moment-to-moment basis, then if some imposed change comes from on high, you're more resilient, you're more able to deal with these changes that you didn't choose when you're just working those change muscles more often.